All right. If you got a Bible, go with me today to 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5, we're going to read verses 14 and 15. And we are uh, about to conclude a series we've been in for the last number of weeks called More Than Able. More Than Able. And in case you haven't been here, I'll just catch you up. We've been talking in this series about how we really do serve a God who he is more than able. Uh, The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, if you've been here, you probably already have it committed to heart because we've read it every single week. But Ephesians 3, 20 says, now to him who is more than able, or to him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we think, all that we ask according to the power that works in us. In other words, Paul writes, we serve a God who he is able. And I've said it every week, but part of why we gather is just to strengthen and encourage each other. And so I'm just going to say it again. Uh, can, Can I encourage you wherever you are today, you're not stuck. We've been saying it every single week, but wherever you are today, whatever circumstance, whatever need you have, uh, whatever fear you're carrying, whatever thing in your life that you feel like is an insurmountable mountain, can I just say that you are not stuck? That God is a healer, God is a provider, God can work miracles. We serve a miracle working, wonder working, all powerful God. And the Bible says he is more than able. There is nothing that limits our God. The Bible says that with God, key words, with God, all things are possible. So just think for a second, whatever you're facing today, uh, whatever you're carrying, whatever thing in your life, just know today that with God, all things are possible. I just, I, I, I can't see how it's going to. Well, that's okay. You can't because God can. And with God, all things are possible. The Bible says in Mark 9, 23, that to him who believes. So the person who has faith or trust or confidence to him who believes in God, nothing will be impossible. There's nothing today that is too big. There's nothing today that is just too scary. There's no hole today that you might be in that is too deep, that is too much for our God. We serve a God who's more than able. And we've been saying this every single week. It's uh, kind of astounding if you think about it that uh, as a whole, we we really do believe this. Uh, I I would say for most of Christians across our country and in our culture, we really do intellectually believe that, no, God can do anything. Uh, we, we've, we, we said it before, but if we took a test today, multiple choice, and we had all the different questions, can God still do miracles? Yes. Can God do the impossible? Yes. Can God heal? Yes. And, and we, we intellectually know this, but for so many people, we live lives that are void of this supernatural power. We get, we get the doctor's report. We have the conversation at work. All of a sudden, this thing comes and and it's facing us. And rather than being strengthened in our faith and something in us rising up saying, that's okay, because I serve a God who is with me. And I know that God is more than able. We we shrink back. And, And for so many people, maybe not you, but for so many people, we live lives that are just void of the power of God. Oh, it's available to us. We're in a covenant with God. God desires, it is his will to move in our life. But for so many people, our life is just void of the freedom that God can bring, of the deliverance that God can can bring, of the power and the supernatural miracle wonder working presence of God that's available to every single one of us. Oh, God is more than able, but the question is, am I experiencing in my life the power and presence of God in the way that God wants to and desires and promises in the scripture that he, that he will, will do. We've been talking about different things in this series. Well, how do we begin to live this life? And we've been talking about things like receiving a word from God or hearing from God. We, 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 we gotta know in our heart or be able to see in our heart what God desires to do if we're gonna have faith. We've talked about faith because the whole kingdom of God, someone say the whole kingdom, Okay, the whole kingdom, we're awake. The whole kingdom of God, it operates on the currency of faith. So, so, so faith is the key to everything in God's kingdom. We talked about faith. We've been talking about uh, the power of our words. We've been talking about things like obedience. And this morning, as we continue in our series, I wanna talk about something that should be familiar to every single one of us, uh, but I'm praying today God will strengthen in us. And that is, I wanna talk about prayer today. 
I want to talk about prayer. I want to talk about becoming or being a person of prayer because here's one of the things the Bible teaches us that that God says that we 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 should pray and that we should ask. I had a couple things this week happen that just have reminded me of this. Uh, one, I was sitting down and having a conversation with someone over over lunch, and they were expressing to me a disappointment they had. And, and it was an opportunity that they didn't get, and they were really disappointed. And I said, well, man, that's, that, that, that's, that, that's terrible. I, I, I didn't know you wanted that opportunity. And they said, yeah, I mean, I've, I, I've never told anybody. And have you ever had one of those moments that you kind of get like the light bulb? And I said, well, hold, hold on for a second. You've never told anybody that that's something your heart really desires? What? Wh- why is there this big disappointment? Buddy, I bet they didn't even know that's something you'd be interested in. I had another conversation with someone. They said, you know, it's, it's amazing as I think about uh, uh, prayer. We were talking about the ser- sermon for today. And they said, you know, we had this need in our life for two years. And for two years, we were struggling and we were hurting and we were kind of in pain. And, and then it occurred to us, we, we're not praying. We've never asked God. We've never out of our mouth verbalized and said, God, we need your help. And they, they said, we, we, would, you, would you believe it? That after two years of struggling, we begin to pray and, and God did a miracle in our life, something that only God could do, a supernatural miracle. Why? Because we begin to, to pray. You know, God does know everything. The Bible does say that. That God knows everything you have need of before you even ask. The Bible says God right now, he knows every fear, every concern, all the weight you're carrying, all the need you have and all the desire in your heart. God knows all of it before you even ask. And yet the Bible teaches us that we must be a people who who pray. What what does the book of James say that you have not because you you ask not? And I, I just wonder if there's anything in our life today that we really do need God's help. And we really do need God to to come to our aid. We really do need the power and the presence of God. But we've yet to open our mouth and begin to to pray. Can I ask you a question rhetorically this morning? But are you praying? I I don't mean before dinner. I don't mean just, you know, a quick nod to God. Are you praying? That thing you have need of, that thing you're carrying, are you praying? Praying because we're going to see today that when we pray, we serve a God who He answers prayer. Can I get an amen? First John chapter five verse fourteen. We're, we're going to read it today. Two scriptures. First John five fourteen and fifteen. It says this, reading from the New King James Version. It says, "Now this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us." And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. Go back to verse 14. I want to read it one more time. It's short. And so for good measure, let's just read that one more time. Uh, The Bible says this, that now this is the confidence. This is the confidence. This is something that we have assurance of. This is something that we just, we know that we know that we know. This is the confidence that we have in him that if, in, in, in my Bible, I like to scribble and underline and take notes, and I think everywhere that I can, I'm always circling the word if. Be, be, because so much of, of God's kingdom, it, it operates on this if-then principle. If you will, then, then God will. See, God often invites us into things, and he says, well, if you will do this, then I will do this. And the Bible says the confidence we have in God is that if If we ask anything according to his will, here's what we know. We know that he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, verse 15, if we know that, then here's what else we know. We know that whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. If you're taking notes, you can write this down. Title of the sermon this morning. I want to preach a sermon that I'm simply titling this, When You pray, when you pray. Uh, Just to make sure we're still all awake at the 9 a.m., look at your neighbor and just say, neighbor, are you praying? Oh, that, that is... That is the weakest amount of participation I have ever seen in my entire life. I'm up here burying my soul. I'm kidding. But just like, it's not in, we're all the way. Look at your neighbor and just say, neighbor, do you pray? Come on, neighbor, do, do you pray? Okay. 
Some of, you, some of you are like, this is why I sit alone, so I don't have any neighbors. I don't have to do these silly things you ask of me. I, 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 I think for, for, for so many people, we, we think about prayer as something that is mysterious. And, and, and while there may be mystery in prayer, I, I don't think that prayer is actually that mysterious. Uh, some people, we think about prayer uh, in this mysterious way, like when a kid uh, accidentally or purposefully lets go of a balloon full of helium. Have you ever done this before? I don't know if you've done it on purpose. Uh, one of my children recently did it on accident. And as they watched their balloon just float away into Never Never Land, they said, where do you think it's going? And, and there's that mystery in, 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 in a child's mind or heart that goes, where, where do you think it's going? How far will it go? I, I, I don't think they asked this, but, but I said, I don't know, buddy. I said, do you, do you think that a plane will see it? Do you think anybody in the airplane will wave at it? And we're just, we're, this, it's the mystery. Where did the balloon go? Where is it going? And I think sometimes we think about prayer like it's this mysterious thing. What happens when, when we pray? What, what, what happens when I pray? And is God listening? And what, 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 what are the results of that? And can I just say this morning that I don't believe that, again, while there is mystery in prayer, I don't believe that prayer is really that mysterious because the Bible tells us pretty, pretty clearly, and we're using one scripture today, but the Bible tells us pretty clearly that when we pray, here is what happens. And I want to give you very simply, the, the, these are not, you know, uh, uh, outstanding revelations. They're just simple truths that I'm praying today would strengthen your heart and would encourage you to, to, to become or return to being a person of prayer. I want to give you three truths things that happen when we pray. Number one, you can write this down. When we pray, here's what we know, that God hears. 1 John 5, 14 says, this is the confidence we have in him that if we pray, when we pray, that God is listening. I, I, I don't know if any husbands in the room can, can relate to me, uh, but there are times that my wife is speaking. She's talking and I'm not listening. This, this happens on uh, most weekends that I all, all think, all right, let's settle in for a, for a relaxing weekend. And my wife will go, do you not remember the 19 obligations we have and the four things I said we got to do? And I know I, I obviously wasn't, wasn't listening. Can I tell you, this is not God. This is not our God. The Bible tells us very clearly that when we pray, our God hears our God hears. The Bible says this in Psalm chapter 34, verse 15. I'll read it to you from the screen. It says, the eyes of the Lord, they are on the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. The Bible says the same thing. It's a quote from this Psalm, but in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 12, here's what it says. For the eyes of the Lord, they are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayers. His ears are open to their prayers. Can I just encourage you today that when you pray, God hears. That when you pray, your prayer does not go to some distant never-never land. No, your prayer goes from your heart, from your mouth, to the ears of our God. And here's what 1 John 5.14 says. This is the confidence we have in God that if we pray anything according to his will. Pa pause right there. Because I think sometimes this is a, a, a hang-up. I don't know if it's ever been a hang up for you, but, but I know it's been a hang up for me before that, that I'll pray and I'll pray my heart out. And then I wonder, well, is, is God really listening? And after I get to the point where I okay, no, no, God, I, I know you're listening. I wonder, yeah, but, but the things that I was praying are those things that, that, that are pleasing to you. Those are those things that are in line with what you want. And we can get hung up going, well, I, I can't really pray, Brandon, because see, it says right there that if I'll pray his will, he hears me. But Brandon, I don't know. I don't know the will of God. And I, I think there's times where it's important for us to be very specific. But I think there's other times it's actually okay for us to be maybe more generic in nature. And can I, can I just offer to, to you today that while we might not always know the specific will of God, that we always know the, the general will of God. I'll, I'll give you this as an example. We, here's what we know. We know that we serve a God who the Bible describes him as a loving, heavenly father. We know that we serve a God that, 
The Bible describes him as a loving heavenly father who is full of grace and mercy and compassion. We know that we serve a God who the Bible describes as a loving heavenly father who is full of grace and mercy and compassion, so much so that he demonstrated or proved it in the fact that he gave to us his son, Jesus that Jesus came from heaven to earth and he lived the life we could not live. He died the death we deserve so that in his death and resurrection, by faith in his finished work, that we now have access to all of the blessings and benefits that God has freely made available. Well, you might not know the specific will of God, but here's what you do know, that it is God's will for my body to be whole. Here's what you, what you do know. It is actually God's will. It's his desire that my needs are met, that I can pay my bills and we got food on the table. It's God's will, his desire for there to be peace in your household, for your marriage to be healthy and strong and whole. Oh, it is God's will that you have peace in your mind. It is God's will that you have comfort and counsel. See, we might not know specific, but what we do know is at all times, we can be assured that God's will for our life, it is that of a good and gracious, loving, heavenly father. The Bible says that when we go to God, knowing who he is and knowing his will, God, we are in a spot right now. God, we're in a spot right now. And we're struggling with this and I'm facing this and God, I know that because you are my good heavenly father who loves me more, more than I know and who has already demonstrated and given to me the things that, God, I'm, I'm coming and praying that, God, you would meet this need. And the Bible says when we pray according to God's will, here's what we know. When we pray, God hears. Now, remember to write this down. When we pray, here's what else we know. We know that God answers. 1 John 5, 14 through 15, we'll read it again. Now, this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And I love this verse 15. And if we know that he hears us, here's what we know, that whatever, someone say whatever, whatever, that whatever we ask, we know that we will have the petitions we've asked of him. In other words, the Bible says when you pray, here's what you can be assured of. Number one, that God, he hears. God is listening. And number two, that God, he answers prayer. Now, let me just qualify. Um, God doesn't always answer prayer the way you want him to answer prayer. <laughs> can I get an amen? Anybody ever experienced that before? And, and God doesn't always answer prayer on your timetable. I wish he did, but he doesn't. But here's what we do know, that God, he always answers prayer. And what if we step back for a second and realize, God, no, you actually are my, my heavenly father. Like, like God, you're, you, like I have an earthly dad, but you're even better. You're my heavenly father, and you always respond. You always answer prayer. And maybe if I would realize you don't always answer prayer the way that I want, maybe I'd start realizing and recognizing all the places that you are currently and have already answered my prayer. Like, like just for, for example, things that, that, that God answers that maybe we don't love all the time. We're praying for a financial breakthrough and God answers our prayer by starting to speak to us about how we steward and budget our finances and about our giving. Oh, no, I, I, I don't like that, God. That's not, that's r wrong answer. I just want you to, but, but God, he always answers, but doesn't always answer the way that we, we want or think. God, God, I'm praying that you would just break through in our marriage and that we would just have, 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 have a healthy whole and God starts speaking to you about your humility and about things like forgiveness. So no, I, I don't want that, God. I just want you to like break through and do, and do a miracle. But, but here's what we gotta know that God, because he loves us, and he cares about us. And he doesn't just love us and care about us in this moment. He loves us and cares about us like for our whole life. And he wants to see us grow and develop and mature. That he always answers prayer. But he doesn't always answer prayer the way that we want or the way that we think. One of my favorite scriptures, Matthew chapter 7. Listen to this. Uh, uh, reading verses 7 through 11. Here's what it says. It says, ask and it will be given to you. Listen how, uh, how simple Jesus makes this. Like, 
no big qualifications. He goes, uh, no, let me teach you something. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened. I love this verse 8. For everyone. We, we don't like words like that in the Bible because it, it doesn't allow us to like wiggle out of it. But Jesus says, no, I'm talking to everybody. For everyone and anybody who, who asks, they will receive. And he who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be open. Verse 9, or what man is there among you who if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if his son asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? Verse 11, I love this. So if, so if then you being evil know how to give good, give, good, give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who, who ask him? Jesus says very plainly and very simply, he says, ask. Go to God and ask and you, you, you will receive. Seek, you, you will find. Knock, the door will be open for assuredly anyone or everyone who asks will receive, who knocks will have the door open, who seeks will find. He says, let me put it to you this way. What, what man is there among you? What father is there among you who when their kid asks for something, like a, like a piece of bread, because they're hungry, gives them a stone instead? No one does that. Who, 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 who among you as a father when their, 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 their children ask for a piece of fish because they're hungry, hand them a rattlesnake instead. No, no one doing, no, no one doing that. He says, so then if we have a heavenly father who is far superior in every way to an earthly father, how can we not see that our good heavenly father, he gives good gifts to those who, who ask? Can I encourage you today? When you pray, God hears when you pray, God's ear is open and attentive to your prayer. When you pray, God, he answers prayer. Number three, we'll, we'll close with this. Just third thought today. When you pray, you can write this down, peace comes. When you pray, peace comes. Here's what Philippians chapter four, verse six through seven says. Paul writes and he says, be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Can we read that one more time? The, the Bible says, be anxious for how many things? For nothing. Did you know that God would never ask you and I to do anything that is impossible? God would never ask us to do something just to like egg us on. He's not going to ask us to do something if there's not possibility behind it. And yet for so many of us, we go, be anxious for nothing. That's impossible. There's absolutely no way that I can be anxious and not carefully. Like that's not possible. But the Bible says, no, no, it is possible. But it's possible not through willpower or positive thinking, it's possible through prayer. Be anxious for nothing, but instead in everything. Someone say everything. Uh, rhetorically, can I just ask you again, are you praying? Are you praying about everything? Or are you just praying for dinner? Are you praying about everything? Or, or do you just pray when, 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 when you're in a panic? The Bible says, no, be anxious for nothing but in prayer, in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Verse 7, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. In other words, you know what Paul says? He says, there is a peace that's available to you that doesn't even make sense in your human intellect. There's a peace that's available to you that when you add up all the circumstance and when you take full, you don't know why you have the peace you have, but you have it because it's supernatural. 
Jesus said, peace I leave you with, not as the world does, a peace that only I can offer. There is a peace available to you and I that is supernatural in nature that the world cannot give. The Bible says it happens through through prayer. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, it'll guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Uh, moms and dads, have you ever had a parenting fail before? Something you did that just did, didn't work out? Uh, our daughter, Bethany, she's 18 months old, something like that. I, I'm not great at math, so somewhere around there. And um, she's just like in the last week or so gotten where in our in, in a neighborhood pool, she'll put the little arm floaties on and we could put her in the pool and just like push her and she'll just go swim. It's amazing. We can sit there and not have a baby. It's, it's phenomenal. Uh, if you're not rejoicing, we, we are rejoicing in our hearts. So, so yesterday we, we were at someone's birthday party at the pool. And um, I, I wasn't thinking all the way. And, and my wife didn't say, well, you put her in the pool. And so I picked her up by her floaties. And I walked over. And rather than setting her in the pool, you already know, I... <laughs> Dropped her in the pool. And that little girl's got some weight on her, can I just say? Because when she got like two feet under, then popped back, I went, oh. And she, she goes, Iote, Iote. And, and, and I was thinking this morning, you know, there actually is a way in life for people to be looking. And you go, I'm okay. I'm okay. See, everybody at the party was like, <gasps> I'm in my, in my heart, I was like, oh my gosh. I'm like, yeah, it's not a big deal. It's fine. And she's, but, but, but there's a way where life is looking, going, there's no way you're going to be okay. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Why? Well, be, 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 because I'm praying. And the Bible says that when I pray, when I choose to be anxious about nothing but to pray about everything, that when I pray, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, it guards my heart and it guards my mind. Why? Be, be, because I know something. I know that God hears me and I know that God answers prayer. I, I can tell you, I've experienced it before where I am just, I'm just a wreck, but, but I go pray and I begin to pray and ask God and take my need before God and I don't know how to explain how it happens or when it happens, but something in me, this confidence grows. Oh, God, I'm thanking you, and I know today, God, you're listening. I'm not just praying to, to some empty sky. I'm not praying to the clouds. No, God, you're listening, and you hear me. And God, I don't know when you're going to do it, and I don't know how you're going to do it. I don't know what your answer will be, but God, here's what I know, that you've promised you will never leave me, you will never forsake me, and you've promised that you answer prayer. And somewhere in that confidence that God hears me and God answers, the peace of God comes and it just guards my heart. All of a sudden, the anxiousness and the worry, and the, it just... And the peace of God comes that surpasses understanding. And something in me, like my little girl, drops two, three feet under the water, goes, I'm okay. I might be soaking wet, but I'm okay. I, I, I might have got dunked three feet, but I'm, I'm, I'm okay. See, peace is possible when we, when we pray. How, how, how do I see, Brandon, God show up and do the miraculous in my life? Can I just encourage you? You start praying. You start praying. Matter of fact, here, here's the last thing that I, I want to give you. And it's not a point, but you could put a four in front of it, and it could be a fourth point. But here, here's just kind of a closing thought that be, because we know that God hears and God answers and peace comes, we should pray without ceasing. Here, here's what the Bible says in Luke chapter 18, uh, you can go and read the entire parable, uh, but we're just gonna read the first verse. It says, then Jesus spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. You, you can go read the whole parable and Jesus talks about how we serve a God, we have a heavenly father who answers prayer. And the Bible says he spoke a parable and the point of it was that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. 
Here's the Bible says in Thessalonians. I believe it's uh, Thessalonians chapter five, first Thessalonians chapter five, something like that. Here's what the Bible says that we should pray without ceasing. Let me get you the actual scripture reference for a second in case you don't have it. Uh, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.17, it says that we should pray without ceasing. Because we know that when we pray, God hears. Oh, God is listening. Because we know that when we pray, God, he answers our prayer. Because we know that when we pray, that the peace of God guards our heart. Oh, we should pray without ceasing ceasing. Like Jesus said, we should be men and women who we always pray and we do not lose heart because we have confidence in our God. Can I get an amen? Well, here's, here's what I want to do. Uh, some of you might be thinking, oh boy, 10.03, like that was, was that the close? Because my, God, you do answer prayer. I prayed for a shorter sermon today and you did it. <laughs> um, that must have not been, been the will of God. Um, but I, I, as we close, here's what I'm, I wanna give you just three statements. And they're not gonna be on the screen. And so if you got a pen, you, you got a pencil, highlighter, crayon, uh, you got your phone, get, get something out. I want you to write these down because um, I'm gonna give you just three, three statements because you might be saying, well, Brandon, I don't really know how to pray. I don't really know how to pray. And uh, a week ago, we were at summer camp and one of the speakers, uh, he, he kind of did this exercise with all the campers and um, we won't do it in the same way because he went around the room and people were saying things in the microphone and we, we won't do that. Um, I can tell by your lack of response to your neighbor, uh, some of you might be afraid if I start walking around with the microphone. So we're not doing that. Um, but, but I just wanna give you these three or these four statements and, and I want you to take a second to write them down, but I want you to fill in the blank. And, and I actually want you to fill in the blank like right now. So uh, you don't have to have a perfect answer, but just I, I, want, you to, I want you to fill in the blank. But, but the first one is this, God, I'm thankful for fill in the blank. Can I ask you, what are you thankful for today? Might be something like, God, I'm thankful for your love. God, I'm thankful today for your kindness and your mercy. God, thank you that you forgive my sins. God, thank you that I have beautiful children, but whatever it may be, God, I'm, I'm thankful for. What are you thankful for today? Second statement you can write down is simply this, God, I'm concerned about. I'm concerned about. Lord, this morning, if I'm being honest, I'm concerned about our finances. If I'm being honest this morning, I'm really concerned about what's happening at work. I, there's nothing in me that wants to get up and go to work tomorrow because I'm concerned about what's happening at work. God, if I'm being honest, I'm concerned about my children because I don't know if they keep going the way they're going, if they're going to end up following you. I, I'm, I'm concerned. What, what concern are you holding this morning? Number three, write this down. God, I need you to fill in the blank. If, if God was standing in front of you today and God was saying, hey, what is your need? What, what would you ask him? God, I need you to show up in this area. God, I need you to help us in our marriage. God, I need you to heal my body. Lastly, you can write this down. So God, I'm asking you to fill in the blank. This is not any kind of specific prescribed prayer pathway. It's, it's, it's rather statements that would maybe help you get going this morning to stop and and remember the Bible says we enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And so maybe today your prayer is something like this, God, I'm so thankful that you love me. God, I'm so thankful that, that you've forgiven me of all of my sins. And even though I don't deserve it, you call me a son or a daughter of God. But God, today as I come before you, I'm concerned about this area of my life. I don't know how we're gonna pay this bill. I don't know how we're gonna make it through this next season, God. I'm concerned. And God, because I'm concerned, God, I'm, I'm acknowledging today that I need you to help me. God, I'm expressing, I'm acknowledging my dependence. I need you too. And so God, I'm asking you, would you? And actually what, what I'd like to do is I'd, I'd like to give you maybe five minutes or so. And I, I would like to invite you today to begin to apply the sermon right now. 
I, I'd like to invite you to, t- to apply the sermon and, and to right now in these next number of moments, we're, 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 I'll, I'll lead you here in a second, but I wanna invite you as we close service, we got time that we would take five minutes or so. And rather than just jotting some points about prayer down in our journal, jotting some thoughts about prayer, that we would actually respond and maybe put the journal down and we'd say, God, okay, so me and you, I'm hearing your word. I'm hearing, I'm being reminded today that God, when I pray, you hear me and you answer me and that there is peace that's available to me. And so God, I'm going to to pray. I'm gonna ask here in a minute that we take five minutes, the worship team is just gonna play behind us. And it might be a little uncomfortable, might, 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 might be a little awkward for you, but right, right there where you are, whether you wanna kneel down, whether you wanna stand up, whether you wanna come and pray at the altar, I'm just gonna give you five minutes. And let's take five minutes and let's just pray. Maybe you just wanna to sit today Think and let God minister. Whatever you want to do, can we take five minutes and can we respond to God's word by putting into practice? So let me let me pray for us as we close, and then I'm going to give you five minutes, and Spencer will will lead us from here. Lord, today as we have come to your word, and as we've been reminded today the power of prayer, as we've been reminded today about the reality that God, you really do hear our prayer. There's not a single person here today that if they would begin to lift their voice and call out to God that you would not hear, that your ear would not be attentive to. Oh God, I pray you'd remind us and give us revelation that you are a God who hears. We thank you that as we've talked about the reality that you hear us, but not only do you hear us, that you answer prayer, that there'd begin to be faith and 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 confidence that would rise up in us to say, you know what, I'm not stuck. You know what, it's not over. It might feel like it's over, but it's not over because my God is a God who can do anything and he answers prayer. I, I, I pray that as we take these five minutes and we begin to pray, we begin to right where we are in our seat or however we posture ourselves, as we begin to pray and in our words, begin to call out to you and say, God, I'm thankful for, God, I'm concerned about, and I need, and so I'm asking, Lord, I pray that you would, you, would, you would in such a real way make your presence known to everyone in this room, that in a real way today that anxiety would begin to dissipate and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding would begin to guard our hearts and our minds. And we leave here today knowing that we are loved by God, having hope in Jesus and confidence that our best days are ahead of us. Thank you that as we begin to pray, you hear us, you will answer, and peace comes in Jesus' name. And right where you are, let's take five minutes and just pray.